Ed and Lorraine's paranormal investigations are eerie, to say the least. Most of you already know the stories. Their life's work has been adapted into several different films, the most popular being the Conjuring franchise. But the actual real life events they've inspired are stories that will have you thinking twice about ghosts and demons. Today we're counting down the top 5 scariest audio from Ed and Lorraine Warren. The real stuff. Some of these audio files are directly from their investigations. Other audio files are the Warrens talking about their investigations. Now, here's the thing, out of all of the hundreds of cases that the Warrens have taken on, allegedly, there isn't much in terms of video or audio available of the actual investigation. You could argue that, hey, they were the most active during the 70s and they probably didn't really think to record all of their paranormal investigations. Or you could be a skeptic. So let us know in those comments below at the end of the video where you fall in terms of believing whether or not Ed or Lorraine Warren are the real deal. Now with that in mind, let's jump into our list. Starting us off in at number 5, Annabelle. Here we have a clip of Lorraine Warren that's fairly recent, talking about the real life Annabelle doll. A doll which was given to a college student by her mother as a gift turned out to be a doll that was manipulated by a demon in an attempt to possess her or her roommate. The events surrounding the doll and why Ed and Lorraine were brought in are eerie at best. It began with the doll moving around the house on its own, and even resulted in one of their friends being brutally attacked by it, with the doll strangling him. Here's what Lorraine had to say about it when the second film inspired by the doll, Annabelle Creation, came out. Evil needs a body to go into, and if you're vulnerable, it's gonna be you. And at number four, Amityville. Here we have a recording of Ed and Lorraine retelling their experience with the famous Amityville house in Long Island. Now, at the time when they were called, they didn't realize that the house had been the location of six previous murders. Here's Ed describing what they experienced when they first got there. We went into the house that day. We didn't realize that it was diabolically infested. He went to that shrine and he brought back from there a priest, an exorcist, who said masses in the house. Why? If this was a hoax that was created by the Lutz family, why six months before this man was murdered and his family was an exorcist in that house. Eerie stuff. The Amityville horror case has long been criticized as being a hoax perpetuated by the Lutz family. But from what the Warrens claim, it was a sinister place long before the family had the unfortunate luck of moving in there. Up next at 3, The Haunting in Connecticut. This particular case is concerned with a haunted funeral home, and it happened in 1988. The couple had gotten a call from the homeowners, saying that they were being tormented by ghosts, to the point where the assaults were even sexual in nature. Now The house had been converted from a funeral home to a regular house before they had bought it. Believing that necrophilia had occurred there in the past, the Warrens had this to say about what they discovered there. The instruments they used for embalming, the embalming table, the chain hoist, everything was still there. Mm -hmm. But there was lumber all over. There was also what they called the uh, sales coffin room where they put the caskets. And at number two, the White Lady of Union Cemetery. In East Connecticut, there's a spirit that Ed and Lorraine had made various attempts to capture via psychic photography. According to Ed, people had claimed to see a lady in white walking around the cemetery, so the couple investigated it. Ed stayed in the graveyard for seven nights, leaving his home around midnight each night, and waited with his camera. He tells of how on September 1st at 2.40 a.m., he saw the White Lady. Here's what he had to say about it. I'm sitting there and I could see all these lights over near the Baptist Cemetery, all around the stone wall, and all these thousands and millions of insects were just chirping away. All of a sudden things started to quiet down, and I could hear what sounded like a woman weeping. I took the camera out and I could see all these ghost lights suddenly forming into a figure. Mm -hmm. of a woman. He goes on to say that he wasn't able to see her through his camera, but only with the naked eye. He put his camera on his tripod and let it run, and tried to walk towards her, but she disappeared. So he backed away, and that's when she reappeared. He then saw some shadow ghosts holding her back from him. He claims that a shadow ghost then pushed her towards the road, and then she was gone. And finally, in her number one spot, Bill. The Enfield Poltergeist is one of the Warrens' most publicized cases. It was the topic for The Conjuring 2 film, in which we saw the Warrens, played by Patrick Wilson and Vera Famiga, attempt to help the family rid themselves of spirits who were severely haunting them in the late 70s. The film actually used the audio recordings that the duo recorded while at the house as inspiration. Take a listen. <laughs> As you can hear, the demon's voice is audible talking to Ed. The demon was possessing one of the four children, a girl named Janet, and the voice was said to have been called Bill. This is by far the most famous audio recording of the Warrens. Alright, there we have it friends, so what do you guys think? Is the Enfield recording authentic? Do you believe in the hauntings that Ed and Lorraine have dealt with over the years? Or are you a skeptic? 
Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know. If you dug this video, spread the love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 5 Scary Stories and hang out with us some more. We've also got a ton of other videos on our channel, so be sure to check out the playlist flashing on your screen. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all in the next video.